Hey, Jim Hoffman here from EMS Office Hours, and this is your Monday Minutes. Um, today, uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, being flexible when intubating, and I also want to try to point out three things that I kind of took away from a video I watched over at EMS1.com. Um, you can see this video by Chris Celebrellero, and he goes over some key points on intubating. I was going to just do this straight off, but I figured let's just watch the video and then I can let you know what I took away from this presentation. So let's just quickly watch this and I think you'll understand a little bit what I'm talking about. My name is Chris Savalera and welcome to the Wise of EMS. You know, paramedics have demonstrated for years that airway management and intubation is, is part of their skills and part of their toolbox. But studies have questioned that paramedics may actually be doing a little bit more harm than good during intubation. And a lot of folks are starting to say that maybe we need to take airway management out of the paramedics toolbox. Now that we've gotten into things such as the King Airway, what you're seeing now is a lot of services are using this as primary airway, especially in cardiac arrest and in trauma. And a lot of the reasons why that's happening is it's an ego process based on what's best for the patient. So if we try to intubate somebody and we look at doing that for four or five attempts, it's causing some concern because we want to be able to get that intubation. Some of those reasons why though is when we go into the ER, they give us a little guff about why isn't this patient intubated, or maybe it's an infrequent skill. I mean, think about when's the last time that you had the opportunity to intubate somebody? So some of the things that we need to do is we need to practice this skill a little bit more. There's also some confusion about airway management. This is one of the things that I like to talk about a lot. And some of the confusion is intubation is not airway management. Intubation is a tool within your airway management toolkit, and it's really the whole process of airway management that we need to look at. As we get into the process of getting better into intubation, we really need to determine that we have to have X amount of intubations per year to stay consistent in our skills. Let's go ahead and look at our video. And the way we're taught to intubate is we go ahead and put the blade into the right side of the mouth, and we sweep the tongue to the left. And this gives us the opportunity to kind of inch our way into the molecula so we're able to intubate and pass our tube. I want to show you a variance to this that may be able to assist you in the process of intubating. Now go ahead and start with your blade from the corner of the mouth. If we go from the left corner to the left side of the throat, and now we go ahead and straighten our blade out, we're right into the molecula, and this gives us the opportunity to pass that tube even more. Now, when we think about airway management, it's important for you as the paramedic to know that you passed the tube through the cords. If somebody asks you, are you in, I think I'm in is never an acceptable answer. You want to go ahead and ensure that you pass that tube and you're delivering good airway management. With these tips, we're going to be able to ensure that our patients receive a great quality of patient care and we go ahead and support their airways as best that we can. Okay, so um, I think that video, nice and short, right? And I think it really covers some key points um, that Chris mentions. And the one thing I, I think is important is that whole new technique. You know, he showed you a little way there of going into the from the left side and straightening out the blade to visualize the uh, vocal cords. And you know, I went over a video a few weeks ago about using the burp method um, to help you visualize the vocal cords. So keep in mind that you know. It's sometimes intubation is not as easy as it, as we think it it should be, or that it is maybe with a mannequin. Um, and by keeping these new techniques and these new methods and or methods that other providers might show you that might not be uh, one hundred percent, you know, the standard that you're used to seeing when you see people intubate patients. Um, it might be a method that might work for you. It might be something as simple as the blade choices that you choose when when intubating patients. So keep in mind, don't just go with the MAC4 
and the 702 you know sometimes it might be that you're going to have to use a miller blade or maybe a smaller mic blade or maybe some of these techniques that chris mentioned or that i've mentioned in the past in previous monday minutes be open to these new techniques when debating i think we're going to help you increase your success rates now on top of that very important that chris mentioned is not to second guess your success don't be saying things like i think i'm in See that you pass it through the vocal cords, uh, auscultate your lung sounds, auscultate your abdominal sounds, and do your end tidal CO2. That is the gold standard on confirming endotracheal intubation. Don't second guess it. Make sure that you're in by checking all of the tools available to you, your assessment and you think your your equipment things like your end title co2 and o2 saturation and also again chris mentioned this too intubation is not the uh coincide parallel with airway management it is only a tool with everything else you can use when managing a patient's airway whether it be oral oral uh opas maybe it's a nasal nasal airway um, maybe it's just doing something like a BVM and, and, and bag valve ventilations. Uh, maybe it's a King Airway. Maybe it's a Combi tube. Maybe it's an LMA. You're seeing those, those a little bit more coming out there into the field of EMS as well. So just remember that endotracheal intubation is just a tool in the airway management uh, of your patient. It's not everything that's involved with airway management. So just keep that in mind. So long as you're managing the airway and you're getting good oxygenation to the patient and the patient's airway is secure, that should be your end goal, not necessarily endotracheal intubation. I'm going to put a link below this video uh, to the actual uh, EMS-1 uh, video. So you can go check out that video in real time there, as well as a lot of other videos that they have there and other techniques and tools that you can use uh, in EMS as well. I know I give some here on Monday Minutes, but you know what? There's a lot of information out there in EMS, a lot of other educators and EMS uh, leaders out there who are providing this information to you. Uh, to make you a better provider and to give you the best possible ways and methods to treat your patients and be aware of things when treating your patients. So that's pretty much it for this Monday Minutes, guys. I hope you can use some of these tips, um, and I hope maybe, if anything else, it, it's encouraged you to go ahead and research some more information out there and to kind of look at other videos, other audios, other documents out there, or even just go ahead and crack open that old paramedic textbook and review some of these uh, techniques and information when it comes to specifically, in this case, endotracheal intubation. Go ahead and check out the archives over at emsofthehours.com or uh, check out the Monday Minutes there and, of course, the live podcast as well. Um, until next week, guys, this is Jim Hoffman from EMS Office Hours, and as always, stay safe.